All right, let's start out with going over yesterday's homework. So, uh, A, calculate the radius of proximal star B in meters and in Earth radii. Okay, so we're from the transit data, which I give here, that we have this percent every this many days. Uh, we want the radius of the planet. So this is going to be based off of this. Here, right, that's what we're basing this off of, and we're trying to find the radius of the planet. So, uh, let's see what we have. Delta F is how much the light uh, is, how much of it is blocked. Now we have it's 0.558%, but delta F, remember, it's not a percent, it's a decimal, so that would be 0 0.00558. Uh, and then our planet is what we're solving for. And then our star, we have the radius of the star, but it's not in meters. We have radius 0 0.141 times the radius of the sun. So, uh, let's find out. Here, I know. I'll go up a little here. So our star is going to be 0 0.141 times the radius of the sun, which is 6.955 times 10 to 8. So what is that? Uh, six nine five five do 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 do, do times zero point one four one. Okay. So nine eight. I'll be lazy and say nine point eight times ten to the seven. To save in space. That's how the radius of our star. So it's going to be uh nine eight times ten to the seven squared. So squaring that, whoops, got the division. Uh, we get the square. Oh boy, okay. Uh, I'll do nine point six one seven. So that's let's see, three six nine twelve. Okay, one seven times ten to the fifteen. So we're then going to multiply that up, to multiply it by this here. So then we get uh, times 0 0.00558. Okay, oh boy. So we get, let's see, that's, so you get, uh, let's see, 5, yeah, 5.366 times 10 to the 13 equals r planet squared. Uh, so, then square root that, and you get okay, uh, I'll do 7.325 times 10 to the 6 meters. So that's our answer. Let's see, A, calculate the radius of proximity in meters and in Earth radii. So that's your answer in meters. Now, to get it in Earth radii, you are going to divide by the radius of the Earth, 0 0.371 times 10 to the 6. So divided by 6371. Oh, I hate how when you press, once you hit second, when you hit equal on this, then it like thinks I'm trying to hit second for some reason. Okay, uh, 1.15 basically. So this planet, Proxima Centauri b, is only about 15% larger than the Earth. So yeah, that's, there's your answer for that. Okay, b, calculate the orbital radius of Proxima b in AU in meters. Okay, so here, to find the orbital radius, we need to use uh, Kepler's third law. So that whole thing is that uh, time squared in, wait, the time in years squared equals the semi-major axis cubed divided by the mass of the star. Now, we have the mass of the star, that's 0.123. Okay, so in this formula, the mass to use is in solar masses. 
So m star is just going to be 0 0.123. Uh, now, t in years, let's see, because what do we have? We have a transit uh, every 11.186 days. So it's going to be 11.186 divided by 365. Okay, 0 0.0... I'm going to write 0 0.03, but I'm going to be using this full number, so. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll say 1, because it's 0 0.06, yeah, okay. okay. So, we have 0 0.031 squared equals A S M cubed divided by 0 0.123. So, first thing is we're going to square this. Okay. Nine four. So zero point zero 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 nine four. Now I'm gonna multiply by point one two three. Okay. So now this becomes three. One one five five two three, and then you have to cube root this. Oh, well, no, I'm getting rid of the cube. That becomes point zero four eight seven. That's five four eight seven AU. Okay, so that's your orbital semi-major axis in AU. Uh, and to get this in meters, we are going to be multiplying by how many meters are in 1 AU. And there you go. So you get 7.286 times 10 to the 9. Okay, so now where are we? Okay, so now C, calculate equilibrium temperature approximate story B in Kelvin and convert Celsius and Fahrenheit. Okay, so equilibrium temperature. Uh, yep, by R. Oh, oh wait, it's 2R. There we go, okay. All right, so what do we have? We have T star, we have that. As give it up here. Where is it? Uh, three thousand forty-two Kelvin. RS. Uh, we use that up here. RS here. So that's nine point eight times seven to the seven. And RO is what we just got in meters, which is seven point two eight eight six times ten to nine. Okay, so we can solve T E Q. Equals 3042 square root of 9.8 times 10 to the 7 divided by 2 times 7.286 times 10 to the 9. All right. So we divide that by 2, divide this by 2 first. So 3.643. Oh, wait, no, we're multiplying by 2. Whoops. Times 2. Times 2. Okay. So 1.457. Let me get to divide. Yep, point zero zero six seven two five. 
Mm. Yeah. Okay. Then we square root that. Zero point zero eight two. So I haven't been bolding my answers, which is bad. I should actually, I should be doing my due diligence here, bolding all my answers. So let's see. An answer. There's an answer. All right. So now let's see. This will be an answer. So this times 3042. 249.467 Kelvin. Okay, uh, which is also asked to convert to Celsius, so that's minus 273, so negative 23.533, and to Fahrenheit, negative 10.36. Okay, so there you go. Um, <laughs> it's cold, but it's not impossibly cold, right? If you remember, um, Mars's equilibrium temperature is what was it? I don't even remember. Uh, dwarf planets. Roll. And it's here we go is negative 53 okay so negative 53 fahrenheit was mars equilibrium temperature and there's talks about oh there was water on mars could there be life on mars so that's like a big oh maybe i don't know right granted when they're talking about life on mars they're talking about like bacteria they're not they don't think there's actually like you know things walking around on mars um but i mean this is better right negative 53 to negative 10 like that's not terrible like you could have something with that especially if you have because again this is without an atmosphere so if you have an atmosphere that's going to increase that temperature so this could be a habitable planet maybe it's not the greatest possibility um the temperature could of course be closer to earth um and also this is around a, a, a m star a red dwarf star and one issue with red dwarf stars is is they seem to flare a lot more so that's sort of an issue that that uh, people talk about. And I'm gonna talk about this more uh, tomorrow when we get into habitability. So it's not the best option, but considering it's the closest planet to us outside of our solar system, and it's not like obviously wrong. Like again, it's not you know negative, uh, you know, uh, instead of negative twenty three Celsius, it's not negative two hundred thirty Celsius, right? It's not um, or. 3000 celsius you know what i mean it's it's a reasonable it's a reasonable ish temperature to that could have something so that's that's interesting with that that we can have something like that okay so today um i'm gonna be, be doing some practice uh with uh this kind of stuff so uh yeah let me uh pull up something here so i have this here so we have a bunch of transit curves and these are i don't mean i'm sure this is not the exact data that you get it's sort of been modified a bit but this is basically what we kind of get so you can see here here is the light from a star and at a repeated amount it's the amount of light drops see so here's your sort of percent decrease so you have this repeating pattern and we can sort of figure out over this many days, we can then figure out what kind of planet is here. So I'm not, there's a lot of these, I'm not going to go through every single one, um, but you can kind of see how this, this could go about. Um, and I will say that, I'll just say this right now, uh, on the final, you will have to do something like this. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> you, hopefully you, uh, kind of pay attention to this here and see how this works. Um, again, I'm not going to do all of them. Let's see. I'll, I'll do number one and maybe three. 
See, there was a couple that I kind of wanted to show. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so here's one that has two planets orbiting it. And so you can see, so the green is one planet and then the brown is another planet. So you can see, of course, if you have a lot of planets, this can get incredibly complicated. Here, 10 is like a pretty small amount, kind of hard to tell. Um, oh, yeah, here's, okay, so here's where you have three of them. <laughs> Again, this is all color coded, all nice, right? But you can imagine this wasn't color coded, it'd be incredibly hard to tell, like, all the patterns here. And of course, this is nowhere near as crazy as they can be because for example you have this one <laughs> which here let me uh yeah so <laughs> yeah that that's a lot <laughs> to, to keep track of um we're not gonna try that because oh boy <laughs> that would be very difficult to keep track of but you could so this is a star that you know theoretically has six planets orbiting it you know and then there's some more data with that so okay no, it's not what I wanted. Crap. To rotate back and forth. Okay. So, uh, let's do at least a couple. Let's start with number one here. So, um, what I want to solve for for this is I want to figure out um, the planet's radius and its uh, equilibrium. It's it's it, basically what I did for the homework. The planet's radius, the orbital radius, and then the equilibrium temperature. Okay, that's what I'm going to try to go for for here. Now, uh, to do this though, I need information about the star. So this is the star, Trace 2. Um, so let's get that up here. So we have... This is 2B, but that's the planet, but I want the actual star. Okay, so this is the star. Race two, yeah, okay. So stars often have different names. See, also is Kepler one, right? So okay, so here we have the star. You can find the star's information. Let's see, we have mass, radius. Oh, it's almost the same as the sun, and temperature. Okay, so the mass here. Let's see. So we have point oh five. Is that binary system? There's like two numbers there. Interestingly. Okay, I'm going to assume it's 0 0.01 and, point, and then 1 point. Okay, so what do we have for uh, this here? Let's see. So for number one, we have the mass of the star. Well, I don't actually, I don't even need, no, I do need it for later. So yeah, mass of the star is 1.05. And the sun, the radius of the star is just 1, right? Yeah, 1. Mass of the sun, or radius of the sun, whoops, and temperature of the star is 5,850. Okay, so the first thing I want to get is the planet's radius. Okay, so to do that, I need to look at how much light is being, is, uh, being blocked. Now, you can see the numbers here. So the thick lines are 1%, 2%. The small lines are every 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. This is like what? Is it? Eh? Would that be 1.9? Yeah, sure. I'll say 1.9. Now that's a 1.9% decrease. Okay, so be careful about this. So 1. Point, whoops. 1.9 percent decrease in light. Okay. So delta F though, the number that we use for delta F, it's not. Uh, Oh, no, it is, no, it is the percent decrease. Never mind. I'm thinking it wrong. So, yeah. Uh, so, it's the percent decrease. But I'll, it's this number I'm giving here is the percent and delta F. Oops. I pressed the space bar instead. Uh, delta F is, uh, it's not percent, right? It's decimal. So, it's going to be 0, 1, 9. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we have 1, 9 and we need the radius of the star. So... R star, it's again one times, so it's one times the mass of, or the radius of the sun. So it's just going to be the radius of the sun. So we have delta F equals R planet squared divided by R star squared. So we have 0 0.019 equals uh, R planet, which is what we're solving for, divided by 0.955 times 10 to the 8, 
squared. Okay. So. Right, so this number is squared, which I know it's been used in other things up there. I could go look for it. Okay, 4.8372, and that's it's in the 17. Okay, so we're going to multiply over 9.19, that's 15? Yeah. Okay, so radius of the planet is going to be, uh, let's see, divided by, or no, I'm just squaring it. Uh, 9.5868 times 10 to the get 7. Uh, and again, it's always nice to sort of get this in Earth radii, so I'm going to divide this by the radius of the Earth, and I get 15 times the radius of the Earth, about 15.05 Earth radii. Uh, now, what's nice, again, this planet's a real planet, so we can sort of check. Um, so, this was, this was the planet, and let's see, radius of... Oh, okay, so RJ, that's radius of Jupiter. So, uh, some of these, like, gas planets, they're, they're often done with mass and radius compared to Jupiter. So, Jupiter radius in meters is that. Okay, so we have... 6.9911 times 10 to the 7. So, and this planet is 1.27. Okay, so 6.911. That times 1.272. So we have, this says 87. This, this would be 8.79 times 10 to the 7. And what do we get? 9.5, okay, close, right? So again, there's these are not perfect, right, in, in terms of how this works. Um, but you do get the idea of how that that does line up pretty well. So, yeah, I'll take that. Um, this this formula here is an, is, is an approximation, right? It's not perfect. Um, so that's not bad, considering how that works. Uh, okay, so next we want orbital radius. Yes, and for solving for orbital radius, um, we are going to be using... Uh, T year squared equals A, so we need axis cubed. Oops, so axis cubed divided by M star. Okay, so we have M star already, that's 1.05. Semi major axis, let's see, that is what we're solving for. So we need time in year. So, well, first of all, I need to kind of figure out what the time is. So let's see. Um, okay, well, this is like oftentimes it's, it, you, it's hard to tell. If it's like sometimes just by looking at uh, trying to figure out the time between just two gaps. So I like to think, okay, this is like right before six. This seems to be like right before 11. And this is like a little bit before 16. So it's not quite there. But so basically this one to this one is almost exactly five days, right? It's not perfect because again, notice it's a little bit before six, a little before 11. See, here up here, it's a little bit more before 16. It's a little bit more before 21. You know, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty dang close. So it's pretty dang close to these being five days apart, which means that these, therefore, must be two and a half days apart, right? Because it's an equal thing. So uh, we therefore have that T year is going to be 2.5 days divided by 365 days. So our year is 0 0.00865. Right, so it's zero, 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 I think I said eight, six, five, but it's six, eight, five, right? Uh, yeah, six, eight, five. Okay, so that's squared. And mass of the star is 1.05. Okay, so then we're gonna square this. Okay, four zeros and then four, seven.
Then we divide by 1.05. Oh no, time is 1.05. Okay, wait, time is 1.05. Okay, now we're at 4.926. Okay, then we gotta cube root this. Wait, zero three. That's not a great number to round. Do this, which is not great. Don't do. Okay, so A S M. Oof. AU. Uh, and we can check this. This one should be more accurate, I think. Because let's see, orbital 0 0.03556. 0 0.036. That's pretty dang close. 0 0.035, 0 0.036. That's very close. So yeah. Um, and then we want to do times. We want this. That's going to be. Five, that's nine, right? Yes, 5.484 times 10 to the nine. Okay, and then from this, we can solve, we now have all the things to solve for equilibrium temperature because we have T star, R star divided by two R O. So, solving for TEQ. Temperature of the star, we have that as 5,850. Radius of the star, we have, uh, where is it? Oh, it's one times the sun rate, so we have that. Okay, yeah, so that's. And then twice times what we just solved for. Let me just copy paste all this. Okay, so I'll multiply this by two. Okay, so we at now one point nine six one point zero nine six eight times ten to the uh ten. Alright. Yeah. Okay, now we divide. So divided by six, nine, five, five, three. And flip. Okay, zero point zero six three four. Square root this. Points two five one eight, and so this planet has an equilibrium temperature of one thousand four hundred and seventy three Kelvin, which I want the numbers in Celsius and Fahrenheit. Oh, that's not a very nice number. Okay, 2192. Probably safe to guess that that planet does not going to have life on it. <laughs> um, it's also bigger than Jupiter, so, you know, it's a gas planet and stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's not <laughs> ideal. Uh, it's, this is what I'm saying, going back to the example for the homework. Um, that was, you know... Hey, it's a little bit cold, but it's not so bad. It's not this, right? This is very clearly, obviously, not fit for life. It's just nowhere near close to what is reasonable. Um, but yeah, that's again, we have a thing that's it's orbit. It's a thing that's the size of, bigger than Jupiter that's orbiting basically the sun. Um, that's only two and a half days away. <laughs> okay, so it is very, very hot. Let's see. Oh yeah, so again, the binary stars, so there was multiple things. So, 
It is a planet that was discovered a while ago. Um, well, 2006. Um, the darkest known planet. Interesting. Hmm. So it's like super dark. Interesting. It's like made of something that's like very dark materials. Huh. Anyway, because it doesn't have like a, yeah, it's not predicting like temperature or anything, but that's what we're for. <laughs> anyway, okay, so, there, so there's an example for you. Um, let's do one more, and then I'll give you one of these as homework. Um, so let's see, I don't want to do number two. Number three? I want to do one that has like a, a smaller percent. Uh, let's see. 10? Do you want to do 10? Oh, that time is, like, really tiny. You know, let's do 10. Um, okay. So, let's see. We have... Alright. Um, okay. So, Kepler 10. Now let's do 10. Um, okay. So, we want Kepler 10. And I just want the star. I don't care about the planet. Okay, Kepler 10 star. We have, yep, mass radius. Okay, good. All those numbers are good. So, mass, huh, it's slightly less massive, but slightly larger than the sun. Interesting. Okay, so we have mass of the star is 0 0.91. Solar masses. The radius of the star is 1.065. Well, the radii and the temperature of the star is 5708 Kelvin. Okay, so first thing is the uh, the size. So what is the decrease in light that we see? Decrease in light, this is small. So this is, yeah, it's basically 0.02%. Okay, so 0.02%, which means uh, that our delta F is 0 0.0002 okay so you gotta always add two extra zeros in there um okay and then r star is 1.065 times base of the sun so we get 5. okay uh Point four zero seven and meters. Okay, so we have our numbers now. No, I just misspelled planet, but hold on. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we have zero point zero 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 two equals r planet squared divided by. 7.407 times 10 to the 8 squared. Okay, so square this. Boy. Uh, and not great to round. Uh, let's see, it says 3, 6, 9, 12, 17. Okay. Let's do 0 0.02. Let's just do uh, four eight six four seven six. Okay, so multiply with that. So times zero point zero 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 two. Okay, one point zero nine seven three. Right? Yeah, that's still seventeen, right? Wait. Oh, it's 14 now. Okay, so now we gotta square root it. Okay, and we have 1.0973. Yeah. 
to the 7 meters. And if we divide this by radius of the Earth, we get 1.6442. Okay, that's not so bad. 1.6442 Earth radii. That's, yeah, it's pretty reasonable. Um, this actually is a, close to a number that's interesting, which I'll talk about tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, a little bit something interesting number with that. Um, okay, so what are we doing now? Orbital thing. Okay, so we have t here squared equals a m cubed uh, divided by mass of star. Okay, so uh, we have the mass of the star already. Now we need the t in year. Okay, so look back at the graph. Um, hmm. The best thing I like to do for this is just sort of look at like the 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 lines that are like on the lines, basically. Um, oh, that lines up really well. This one is like pretty much exactly on the line. Is there any one that's like really close? Divide it out that way. This one's closer. This one. I think it's this one. Let's go for okay. So this one. Let's see. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's ten lines. And that goes from day two to day 10.5. Okay. So that's 8.5 days. And that's ten rotations. So that means uh, 0.85 days. Wow, this is shorter than a day. Yeah, well, it would be because see, yeah, how there's less than there's t less than a day's worth. Of so point. Wow. Oh, okay. So that's zero point eight five days divided by three sixty five days in a year, which means this is gonna be really small. Zero zero two three three. All right. So zero point zero zero two three three squared equals a. SM cubed divided by mass of the star, which is 0 0.91. Okay, so we square this now. 4, 2, 3. And that is to the 4. 6, oh wow. 3, 4, 5. 5, 4, 2, 3. Okay, multiply by 0 0.91. Four nine three five. Okay, and then we're gonna cube root this. All right, zero point zero one seven AU, and then they gotta convert this to meters as well. That okay, then we get uh two point five four seven times ten to the nine okay <laughs> this planet's like you know less than two percent to the distance from its sun that the earth is uh so now we get to equilibrium temperature. Temperature of the star is 5708. RS, radius of the star, we solve for that here. 7.407 times 10 to the 8. And... Oh, the, this number right here. 2 times 2.547 times 10 to the 9. Easy to forget that 2 in there. Okay, so... Multiply this by 2. We have 
All right, now we're gonna divide this fun stuff. And I gotta... this is gonna be a hot planet, 0.1454. Okay, then we square root this. Oh wait, whoops, I'll just do times one, let me do that, okay. Uh, square root this. E8132. Okay. Five, seven, zero, eight. Bang. 2,176.584. Elvin. 1903. 3458.54. There you go. There's your planet. Uh, what was this one? Yeah, this is okay. This was 2,192 Fahrenheit. This is 3,458 Fahrenheit. So this one's uh, well, all these are hot. Um, let's see. Is there any anything we could talk about for this? Let's see. Okay, the first undeniably rocky planet. Okay, yeah, because this one is where is this? Three, four, seven. Is that a problem we got? Let me check. Oh, yeah, 1.6. Okay, again, this number is not perfect. Let's see. Do we get 0 0.01 AU? Uh, 0 .01, 0 0.016, 0 0.017, so yeah, very, very close. Um, and... Does it have a temperature? Ooh, it does. There's a day and a night side temperature. Oh, interesting, I can figure that out by that. that about... oh, we got hotter. Okay, interesting. Uh, again, the the... Equilibrium temperature is, of course, not perfect in this kind of stuff, but uh, yeah, eight days, wow. So, um, okay, definitely not <laughs> a habitable planet, um, but hopefully you kind of get the idea of how this works. So which one do I want you to use for uh, the homework? A good question. Uh, let's have you do, let's have you do the other one that was small, yeah, do 3b. Well, let me make sure I can get the mass and radius numbers, because I know when I was doing this before, some of the mass and radius numbers were not great. So let me look this up. I'm going to have you do number three uh, for homework. So number three. We have, we have a mass, we have a radius, and we have a temperature. Okay, cool. So um, here's what I have you do for homework. Um, okay, so we have, let's see the numbers for the star, right? So mass of the star is 0.81. The radius of the star is 0.683. Oh, and I should say, uh, yeah, you know, what was the star? This is just okay. hat P11. Is that what it says there? Yeah. Okay. And temperature of the star is 4780 Kelvin. Okay, so from that, and uh, this graph, so you have your amount that the star is dimming, the amount that the planet is dimming the light, and you have the graph to see how often it is. Um, I'm not going to share this document um, because there's other stuff in it I want to use later. Um, so you'll just sort of, I don't know, pause the video, sort of figure out. So what, what you get from the graph from this, you figure out what is the delta F number and how uh, you can figure out the year from this, right? You can figure out how often does this occur? What is the year from this? And... Therefore, oh, you know, let's say it orbits every two days, 
I mean, this doesn't. But if it orbits every two days, then it can solve for t because it's two days divided by 365 days because it's in years. So what I want you to do is just what I did before. So solve for planet radius, orbital radius, and equilibrium temperature. Okay, so that's your homework. Uh, using those numbers for the star, um, try to solve that for this graph here. Um, and again, you can check your work based on uh, the planet itself. But again, keep in mind that the stuff that you get is probably not going to be exactly what's listed online because again, this is approximations, but it should be fairly close. It should, for example, you shouldn't get something like, oh, this planet, I get that it's about the size of Jupiter when in actuality it's the size of Earth. Like it's not gonna be that extreme, okay? So yeah, but let's see how you handle with that and you know, see how this works. So, get, get to getting, I guess. Okay, uh, guess I'm done.